So this is a quick tutorial on using the image recognition wizard, which we'll find under code builders and under image recognition. It's right here. In this little example, I'm going to show you guys how to move over. Um, say you wanted to, you know, click on your new um, new tweets. So here we go. Let's fire up this wizard. And what I'll do first is, you know what? I'm going to start with waiting for the image to show up. Let's just say I'm going to build this macro and have it wait for the image to show up and as soon as it does we'll move over there and then click on it so capturing the image so it's going to ask us to capture an image gives us the crosshairs so now I'm going to position myself and capture this guy that's all you need and it's nice it shows up right here and we know exactly what we caught um, if I wanted to if I had a stockpile of stock images um, something that shows up a lot maybe it's a um, a box or some text or something like that that keeps on occurring I could just go and I've captured it before I could actually browse to to that file on my uh, operating system but you know usually you'll be capturing something new um, so that's what we just did uh, and we actually could pause the macro before it starts looking for this image but we don't need to in this case so I'm gonna go next so my next step is to tell it where to look for this image uh, in this case it's going to be the entire screen so we're going to go with that and what I want to do is um, since I'm just waiting for it it doesn't matter so again the, this is all relevant for us I'll hit next and now I have two options for the match type it could be a correlation coefficient exact match or um, correlation coefficient and this is actually the golden piece of this code the correlation coefficient will allow it just enough accuracy at this 0.7 to not randomly go anywhere on the screen but find what you're looking for yet it has that tolerance built in so it acts like a human and doesn't stupidly say well there was one pixel or something that didn't match uh, I can't see it no even though it's there no this actually works really great and we're gonna give it a timeout so I'm gonna have it go for let's say five minutes so that's 300 milliseconds, right? How many seconds? Oh, not seconds. Yeah, 300 seconds, five minutes, right? 300 seconds, just insert this code. Um, and then I'm gonna say, let's make sure that we know once it saw this, I'll say, I see you. Okay, so let's just run this code. Apparently that four tweets, no, now it's five. So let's see if it actually sees this. I'm betting it is but we never know. Let's see what happens. Great, I see you. So that coefficient, the coefficient effect right here took place. I captured an image of four, but it actually sees it with, even though there are five new tweets here. So that that's where the fuzz comes in. And it's perfect because that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Now let's, let's take it to the next level and say, okay, so I'm waiting for it to show up. Uh, but I actually want to do something with it. So I'm going to go back to the image recognition wizard, fire it up again, and this time I'm going to interact with this guy. So I'm going to say interact, click next. Like I said, it's something that we've captured already, so instead of capturing the image again, I'm going to browse to it. So in my case, this is the default location of all the images I've ca actually captured ahead of time um, as I was testing it myself, but let's say uh, maybe we can't see this and be easier to see so this guy is the four new tweets I'm gonna use this again because it's the one I captured originally so we're gonna reuse the image and go to next and then what I'm gonna say is again I want it to look on the entire screen so we'll go with the, the full screen option 95% of the time I usually pick this but I could actually think of other scenarios and I'll probably do a little tutorial on that where you want to limit the, the visual scope of where the macro will look just so you, you don't get into trouble. Um, basically, you could say, oh, I just want it to be in the window that I'm working with, the application I'm working with, so you don't go off on a tangent clicking wildly on the screen. But in our case, the full screen should be fine, and in most cases, it will be. So we'll go next. Um, so what I want to do is actually left-click on it. You have the option of doing all the mouse clicks there, middle click even, a double right click. But the left click is sufficient. That's what we want to do here. So that's the default in most cases. It's going to be. Where do you want to click on the image is another option that you get to pick from. So if 
you know, you were doing something differently where you didn't have to click in the middle of the image, this would come into play. But most of the time, cent center of image is what you're going to go for. Uh, pixel offset comes in when you do something like below or above. So that doesn't pertain to us. We're going to click in the middle. There's no offset because it wouldn't be in the middle then. So uh, it's, it, it's very smart. Now we're going to go next. Uh, again, I'm going to go with the same exact coefficient correlation. It's been working. So again, I'll insert this code. Um, this time I don't want it to say, I see you. So I'm just going to comment this out and just run the code as is. I just wanted to go over there and click on it, right? Brilliant. So it did exactly that. OK, guys, now comes the time where we're going to go for something interesting. I just downloaded a few other browsers. Um, not even sure if this code is going to work for every browser, but I wanted to show you if it does work. I should test it this first, but anyway, let's. There's nothing like doing it live, right? This will amaze me. I wanted to see if this particular code would work among all browsers. So what I'm going to do is fire it off, and what's happening now is the macro is actually waiting for that, you know, um, image to come up on screen. Oh. Oh, it worked. Whew. Okay, so it definitely works for Internet Explorer. Okay, it worked on the two. Remember, we it's looking for four, really. This is the original one we captured, but it works for the two. All right, we're going to run it again. This guy's running. So, silly boy. I changed the code up here, but silly me. I didn't actually go with... So it finds it, which is kind of impressive, but... I have to modify my coefficient here as well. So I'll give it a five. All right. Let's run it again. So now it's looking. Boom. Woo! It works in Chrome too. Let's fire it off one more time. I'm going to fire it off again. And let's look Firefox. Oh my god. That's OK. I'm impressed. With a little bit of finagling of the code of giving it a little bit of more tolerance, a little bit wider, um, some more latitude, leverage, whatever you want to call it. My one code now works on all the browsers. Well, the three major browsers. I won't say all the browsers, but it works on Internet Explorer, Google, and Twitter. Uh, I mean, and Firefox. I don't know. I'm impressed. I, I don't think there's a lot of other stuff out there with that one little tweak um, well, where you have your one uh, code work everywhere. So, well done.